Hey guys, welcome back. So we've already looked at how to find a turning point for a function. How to find where a graph goes from having a positive gradient to a negative gradient or a negative gradient to a positive gradient. For example, if a graph looks something like this, how to find this point where this line is a tangent and it has a derivative of zero or down here at this line where its derivative is also zero because they are the very bottom or the very top point in an area on the graph. And we know that if the point is up here, it's a maximum turning point. And if the point is down here that turns, where this curve bends, then it is a minimum turning point. And we can also remember that we were able to find whether that turning point was a maximum or minimum, not just by looking at a graph, but if we don't have a graph, by looking at the second derivative. And remember that the second derivative tells us the concavity of a point. So this point, obviously, if we put that x point into the second derivative, will come up as positive. The concavity is up. This is concave up. And this bit is concave down. It bends down and this one bends up. So if it bends up, we get a second derivative which is greater than zero, it's positive. And if it bends down, the second derivative will be less than zero. Okay, but what if the second derivative is too hard to find or it's going to take too much time for a question? Well, then there is another way that we can find whether a turning point is a maximum or minimum. So this is the second way. Let's say we have this example here, y equals x cubed minus 12x plus two. Well, we know that to find where the turning points are, we need to find the first derivative. And the first derivative, which tells us the gradient, and remember we wanna find where the gradient equals zero because that's what happens at the turning points. We have y dash equals 3x squared, and I've just brought the three to the front and minus one. And I know that minus 12 is the derivative of this part because the minus 12 is the number in front of the x term, which is by itself. And we know that it's just the number in front. Plus two has a derivative of zero. We know that plus two has no derivative in that part. Okay, so now that we know that the first derivative is three x squared minus 12, to find the turning points, we make the derivative equal zero. And then we wanna make zero equal to this part because that is the first derivative. So we go, I'll write it the other way around for you. We want three x squared minus 12 to equal zero. And then we just solve for x. If we had a full quadratic here with all three terms, we might even have to do the PSF method and factor it all into brackets to solve it. But in this case, we can just plus 12 to the other side to get 3x squared equals 12. And then we can divide both sides by 3 to get x squared equals 4. And then we can square root both sides, but make sure we do plus minus 2 as our answer. Minus 2 squared is also 4. So remember, when we square root, we always do plus minus as the answer. Okay, and that was because the squared and square root cancel each other out, that it just becomes x. Once we have these two solutions, we can go on to find what the y coordinates are at those points. Because remember, a point has an x and y coordinate. So don't forget to find the y. We won't do that in this example though. Okay, so at x, we have, so we have two points, two turning points. We have x equals two, and we also have x equals minus two. At those two points, we know the derivative equals zero. For those two points, the derivative equals zero. So if we don't want to use the second derivative to find what the concavity is at these points, to find if they're maximum or minimums, by looking at what way they are bending, well, then we can just simply look at what the derivative of the points on either side 
of these turning points are doing. Because we know between these turning points and on the outside of the turning points, the derivatives of all those sets of points are the same. So so what we're going to do is we're going to form a table of values. And I'll just move this over a little bit here. So if I have minus 2 and 2, I actually am going to put in some x points and then I'm going to find the derivative at all these points and I want to find them at either side of these turning points. And I'll show you why that makes sense in a second. We know that at x equals minus 2, the derivative equals 0. And we know that at 2, the derivative equals 0 because we just solved that. But what happens at, say, minus 3? And it doesn't matter what point you pick here. I've picked minus 3 because it's easy but I could have picked any point to the left of minus two. And I wanna know what happens to the derivative at, at minus three, because that's on the left side of minus two. So at minus three, I look at the derivative here, and I know that if at x equals minus three, the derivative equals three times minus three squared, minus 12, and that's gonna equal three times nine, which is 27, minus 12, which is 15. So that is greater than zero. So that part of the graph is increasing. That has a positive gradient. It's going like this. It is positive. Okay, so now that we know that that part is positive, and I'll just move that down a bit so so you can see that now that we know that that bit is positive i can put in here plus because the posit- it's gr- it's a positive gradient what about at a point between minus 2 and 2 what about 0 well at 0 the gradient equals 3 times 0 which is 0 minus 12 so it's negative And what about at a point outside here at 3? Well, we're going to get 3 times 9, 27, minus 12, 15 again. So it's positive. So what I'm going to do underneath this table of values is graph what this would look like. Well, if all these points on the left side of minus 2 are positive, it must be rising here. And then it's flat at minus 2. And then we know that to the right of minus 2, there, it's decreasing. And then we know it's flat at 2, so it's flat again here, and then it's increasing after after that, so it goes back up. So you can see here that if the left side is positive and the right side is negative, then this point is a maximum. And if this side is negative of this point and this side is positive, then this side is a minimum. So we get a maximum and a minimum by looking at what the points on either side of the stationary or turning points are doing. And I'll just move that a bit more there for you. Okay, so you can see here that by creating a table of values with points on either side and in between turning points, if you have three turning points, you'll have to make seven values in that table of values. You can see that by using that table of values, we can see what's happening on either side of the turning points and therefore draw a little diagram like I have below to see whether we have a maximum or a minimum turning point. So that is the second way to work out what type of turning point a point is if you don't want to or can't use the second derivative, which is all about the concavity. All right, so you know you have two ways to figure out whether a turning point is a maximum or a minimum. Hope that helps, guys. Subscribe and share.